Hi, it's David Drake with LJ Capital. Today we're going to be meeting innovators in the PVC and plastic business that had actually replaced guardrails from metals to plastic, which I thought was a clever way. And we got Carrie's here all the way from Korea who joins us. Welcome. Um, manager, right? Manager Mr. Kim and Mr. Yu, the founder. Pleasure having you both here today. Uh, we're sitting here at NASDAQ Studios uh, on Times Square. It's a long way for you guys to come over to be part of it, but I think it's significant that people will know that even though it seemed initially maybe not the hottest top in the world where you make guardrails like this out of plastic, these are not only, you know, hardest, super hard, it withstands crashes and cars being able to drive into them without necessarily breaking through. It even bounces back on some of the videos I've seen. Now, this is a patent that Mr. Yu created about 10 years ago, and it fine-tuned it for such a long time because it had to go through crash tests, right? Yes. Tell me a little more about that. Yes, so creating a guardrail out of PVC plastic was a big challenge for us, and um, one of the big challenges that we had was to create a guardrail out of plastic that had the same functions and did the same job as the conventional galvanized steel guardrail today. Uh, it took a lot of time, a lot of trial and error, but we feel that we're confident with the performance right now, and we plan to show it to the world at this point. So, you know, Mr. Yu started out as an accountant mm -hmm. in Korea, mm -hmm. and then spent 15 years working in the field or so. Mm -hmm. And then one day he drove around working for a plastic company, thought, why can't these rails be done out of plastic? Mm -hmm. Is that about how, how it all started? That was the idea that seeded this whole idea? Yes, it's pretty much how it happened um, and a lot of people would think wow just off of that idea he started this whole company but that's pretty much how it started well, and right and on top of that he also bought a company called uh, you know uh, after that which is already on the exchange mm -hmm. in, in Korea mm -hmm. so now there's two companies yep. one has to do with shipping and one has to do with the guardrails mm -hmm. the idea was right that well if I'm gonna be making this I might as well buy a shipping company mm -hmm. so I can ship things and generate more revenue for the shipping company mm -hmm. isn't that right yeah so he wanted to uh, purchase a company that complements what he's trying to do and with these guardrails like you said they're really heavy and uh, he just wanted to cut costs and find an efficient way to conduct business mm -hmm. and he thought you know why not a company that can handle all the logistics for us and in that way uh, the, the company is perfect for what he's trying to do right now well uh, look I also like the fact that when I first saw it I'm like okay it's made out of plastic <laughs> okay yeah. I guess it's lighter mm -hmm. doesn't corrode mm -hmm. you know it would be easier to create but I didn't think about the impact mm -hmm. a lot of family offices and investors around the globe the new generation want to make an impact in their investments mm -hmm. and this situation you're actually recycling mm -hmm. the plastic mm -hmm. and that's you know trash is a big problem globally mm -hmm. so this the bigger this company gets then I assume then the more trash mm -hmm. plastic you're recycling mm -hmm. so essentially the bigger the company gets the more business that we do in countries all around the world, the bigger impact that we have on the environment. And that was one of the key, fo key things that Mr. Yu was focusing on when he was developing this product. Yeah, that's one of the things that I like the best about this, the impact investment of, of in nature and for humanity mm -hmm. and helping everybody about recycling plastic. Mm -hmm. And well, this one is red. You have other colors, they're green and yellow. Of course. Uh, is there anything special about the colors? Yes. So. Not only are our guardrails able to be manufactured with different colors, it actually has a component with the PVC resin mixture when we manufacture the product, which enables it to emit, emit light um, at night. Oh, so uh, it lights up. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty clever. Basically for more visibility for drivers during the night. I mean, right now we see that uh, the galvanized steel, how they increase visibility for drivers is reflective stickers. Right. But we thought instead of small squares or arrows on the guardrails, why not just light up the whole thing? Right. So you charge it up during the day and at yeah. night, it's lit up. Yeah. And different colors too. Yes. So, I mean, have you guys thought about maybe, you know, use the different colors to warn that it's a sharp turn, for instance. So the red would be like, watch out, there's a sharp turn coming up here. Mm -hmm. And you know, and maybe you know, green means it's kind of straightforward. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I, you know, I thought that'd be kind of a clever way of saying it. Red means there's a turn in, in the middle of the night. It's a good idea, you know, and um, with the colors, the main focus is to 
make the drivers aware of where these guardrails are. You know, there's always accidents uh, amongst people driving on the road because they're, the guardrails just aren't as visible in, so, in certain areas. Well, Mr. Yu, this is quite a long journey you've gotten to this point being here at NASDAQ. Maybe, you know, there'll be an opportunity for you to go public on NASDAQ one day because I know that's part of the conversations we've had. But maybe you can ask him about his plans for the company. Uh, I was in a small country in the United States. I was 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 in the United States. 확보해서 전 세계 시장에 이 안전한 가드레일을 보급하고 싶습니다. How would you please translate? So this company started in South Korea, which is relatively a small land compared to other countries in the world, and he's really excited about the opportunity to introduce it to the United States. And you know, from here on out, he that is his focus. He would like to introduce this product that he believes will perform better than traditional methods that a lot of countries are using, which is the steel guardrail. And from here on out, he is really excited to just market this product and garner more interest mm -hmm. and introduce it. But look, you know, here in the U.S., you know, I think the president was running and mentioned, talking about, you know, we've got 54,000 bridges that need repairs. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, well, we'd be pretty clever, you know, if, you know, your innovation with t tons of patents coming into the U.S. would actually position itself to help fix those bridges. Mm -hmm. If that's possible, I'm not quite sure. But, you know, it doesn't seem like this guardrail is going to be to replace guardrails. It's going to rather be for new roads who need it, <coughs> I would think. Mm -hmm. And there must be, you know, a lot of red tape to get these things implemented. But sure. you guys have pass tests in, in different countries, too. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, sir. So we have passed MASH testing. So, yes, we've passed multiple crash tests uh, that are required for many different countries. Every country has different standards right. and our goal right now is to meet those requirements that allows us to introduce these products to. And also on the video when I see the crash test themselves, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, the thing bounces mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it doesn't even have any damage in it. Mm -hmm. I've seen s scenarios where the car is wedged between mm -hmm. <laughs> these plastic things and doesn't really damage the car as much. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you're going to reduce, uh, 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 you know, fatalities, you're going to reduce the damage. Mm -hmm. and, you know, some of these, if you go to a certain angle, like 20 degree angle, the car just kind of bounces off, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of clever how, how it was built to withstand the kind of pressure. Yeah, so what you want guardrails to do is not to stop a car when it collides with it. You want the guardrail to redirect the car um, and to handle the force that a car has when it collides into an object. For example, you wouldn't want a car to just collide straight into a wall and stop right there. That way, our it's like a bumper, it, right? It is. It's yeah. like a bumper, but it it's is. on the side of the road. Yeah. That's kind of how we should look at it because, you know, you got this patented, you know, structure here and it acts like a bumper, mm -hmm. which reduces the pressure because the metal ones, they break, right? And th yes. the metal ones are there for, I want to make sure you don't get, go over the edge, uh, oh, right through and mm -hmm. fall down. Mm -hmm. But this one says, I'm going to bounce and take an impact and reduce the pressure. Mm -hmm. That's how clever. It is. And also, right. when you put this in, you got to put it pretty deep in, right? How do you do that? It's like, how, how, how deep do you put these uh, poles in to hold, make, it, make it withstand that pressure? So we put, about one po we put the post into the ground about 1.5 meters. All right, that's about five feet. And that way, the rest of the post that is sticking out is very sturdy. Uh, you know, it's on the videos that the car, even trucks, you know, would like, you know, trucks with like 16 to 20,000 pounds mm -hmm. are being withheld with mm -hmm. this. I mean, yeah. it's powerful. It is. Uh, wow, okay. Well, uh, safe the environment mm -hmm. while reducing plastics, mm -hmm. recycling it. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the most attractive portion of this. It is. You know, but I do like the impact fact that it doesn't break, it bounces. Mm -hmm. And the way it's structured is to be able to handle that. I like that. Yeah. Now, some of the plants are also, you started working in Uzbekistan. You yes. open up, you're opening something up there, correct? Yes. So we have a supply contract with Uzbekistan, which we're really excited about. Uh, and just as you said, instead of replacing guardrails, our goal over there is to install guardrails in Uzbekistan where they don't exist. 
and in that way we create, uh, help create the infrastructure of Uzbekistan and make the road safer for drivers there as well. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. I mean, I, I felt when I saw it the first time, like, okay, let me figure out what the value, value proposition is here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you added that it lights up at night, which I thought, wow, okay, I didn't think about that. That's clever. Yeah. And I assume it's pretty resilient. I mean, I, I'm scratching this right now, mm -hmm. and I have a hard time. You can't even scratch this. There's no marks left mm -hmm. at all. I mean, it's very resilient. It is. And so we got resilient. It, t it, it takes the impact. It bounces back like a, uh, like a fender bender almost. Mm -hmm. uh, reduces damage. Some of the cars barely get scratched when they hit it in a certain angle. It bounces back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go through, you know, and the car can keep going. Mm -hmm. So I guess it would be good, you know, if you fall asleep, right? Yeah. And, you know, you start wearing off to the side, yeah. the thing can bounce you back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, it's very clever. And, and now, how long did this take to produce? About a decade or? It, it, about a decade of just a lot of research and development. And uh, it, it was a lot of trial and error. Uh, but at this point, we're confident with the performance of the product. Yeah, and I understand that the, the, the deal you guys cut in Uzbekistan to build a new factory also includes housing and properties and roads. Mm -hmm. But you're not only doing the rails, you're actually also building out, you know, the roads too. So you're getting a little more than just a ra guardrail being added. You're actually doing the architecture or the development of roads from scratch. As far as the roads goes, it's an all-in-one package. Yeah, so let me see, how, how, much, how many kilometers are, are you guys contracted for? A thousand kilometers. No, a hundred thousand. hundred thousand kilometers, sorry. Uh, that's about uh, 60,000 miles about, of rail to be built. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to take some time. How long do you think that will take to produce it, right, right install now, it? Right now, we're estimating about 10 to 15 years. And that's just one country and one contract. Yes. And I'm sure they have <laughs> tons of more roads. Mm -hmm. We hope to, uh, with Uzbekistan, we hope to you know, set a standard for our product, really show other countries that this product does work, and uh, garner interest in that way. Well, I can see, you know, certain countries can maybe position themselves as, hey, we're going to recycle plastic, because, we, you know, a lot, of, a lot of trash has been pushed back away mm -hmm. from certain countries mm -hmm. and, uh, or been rejected. So I, I want to be able to, you know, position a country of saying, hey, we're going to accept more plastic mm -hmm. and we're going to be using it for recycling, maybe here in the U.S. too. Look, thank you for coming today. It's been a pleasure having you here. My name is David Drake. Thank you.